Hi there everybody, Peter of England here giving you a brief update on the situation and the progress of Freeman Legal Services and some of the points that we uh, touched on uh, maybe six or seven weeks ago in one of the videos uh, following the Crown unsuccessful, in inverted commas, uh, Crown Court appeal in Chelsea. What I mentioned to you then is that we were looking for a facility whereby we would help you to start targeting the judicial system in a more meaningful way. And the more meaningful way that we suggested was to go after the judges. So this is the, the point that we're going to cover today. Um, the operation is going to go under a, a, a title Judges Dread, or Judge Dread if you will, because that's what we're going to help you become in front of these judges in these administrative courts uh, in the United Kingdom for now. The uh, full force of this is going to be extended globally, but for now the benchmark uh, uh, assessment is going to be born out of the UK. So, the, the main principles we need to cover here are the following. Um, the City of London is one square mile. This one square mile of the City of London uh, is composed of 640 square acres. An acre is around about, in fact not around about, it's 88 yards by 55 yards multiplied 88 by 55 gives you the, the situation or the area of an acre. The significance of the 640 uh, square acres is that that also represents a checkboard, a checkers board. 640, sorry, 64 squares on the checkerboard uh, of this City of London um, square board where we also have um, the representation of these checkers uh, around the policeman's hat, the checkers in sometimes black or white or blue and white or blue and yellow on the police cars. We also have these checkers, these black and white squares, uh, on the floors of the church and also on the floors of police stations and other civic offices or areas where there is an influence or control. And what these squares, these uh, squares of the checkers board represent is a ancient control mechanism which is also enunciated by the fact that the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer uh, at number 11 Downing Street has his principal rev residence at Chequers. Um, it's no coincidence that these names are, are mentioned time and time again and that you also have a checkbook to write checks upon. Um, part of the control mechanism, uh, which a lot of people don't realize, is the fact that within the Human Genome Project, the 64 codons of the human DNA are a, a well-known energetic field that is manipulated by the Illuminati and the, the powers that be in their energy dance to control you. So this ritual of the justice system with the... Uh, um, Inner Temple and Middle Temple in the City of London controlling primarily the city, the justice system, puts us into a position where we know that the Ministry of Justice is a private company, as is the Bar Council or the Bar Standards Board, as is the Law Society, uh, as is the Association of Chief of Police Officers. All of it is private. All of it is corporate uh, machines there to harvest money from you. So what we've decided to do is preliminarily give you an idea of how this tactique within the court should be uh, presented to the judge. Now it doesn't matter whether you're in a magistrate's court, it doesn't matter whether you're in front of a district judge, it doesn't matter whether you're in front of a county court judge or a high court judge or in a court of appeal. The main thing if you wish to do this before uh, Freeman Legal Services has the full documentation ready uh, for you is the following. As you enter into the court, the only question you need to have answered, and you ask this three times, is are we on the record? Or is this a court of record? 
the judge invariably will refuse to answer and ask you to come into the court uh, and try and bully you and use alternative tactics. The main point that you need to, to bear in mind here is that this is probably going to be a no or a refusal. So after you've asked this three times, what you're going to be doing then is making the judge aware that there are implications for him personally. Okay? Now, what Freeman Legal Services is going to be presenting you with is a notification from the Court of Record which is the Common Law Court of Record 750181 of a series of points that you will then hand to the usher for them to hand then over to the judge. And what it will state on this Court of Record notification slash courtesy notice is that the judge is being made aware and that you can also ask this at the same time is judge are you aware that the government that you support, the government that you are protecting, the government that is your paymaster, is involved in unlawful, illegal international activities, which range from slavery, financial slavery, torture, rendition, wars of aggression, acts against, uh, um, acts against humanity uh, and general criminal activity against virtual conventions from the from the Geneva Convention through various protocols against uh, inhumane and degrading treatments or punishments against prisoners and captives. Now this is a fact because if he doubts it for one moment you can for once point him to the Freeman Legal Services website and we can show there that a series of arrest warrants have been actively in the judicial system from 2008 from myself alone. Uh, this, these uh, arrest warrants originally came about from a, a, a book uh, on which we did some quite considerable work. It was done by a guy called Philip Sands QC who is the senior partner in a uh, legal uh, firm in London um, and it's called the Matrix Chambers. Philip refused to get involved in this, but one thing for certain we know is, because I serve them personally, um, a arrest warrant for various crimes of treason under the Treason Felony Act um, and for various war crimes <coughs> were lodged with the then Attorney General's office for um, war crimes against the allegations of war crimes against people like Lord Goldsmith, um, Tony Blair, Sherry Blair, both human rights lawyers, um, Prescott, who, Jack Straw, Reed, and all uh, a load of other people who were involved in um, Tony Blair's cabinet. We also put onto these, um, these uh, arrest warrants notification that members of the Privy Council, as they'd all taken an oath of allegiance to the Queen, would stand in perpetuity responsible for the actions that they had taken in leading the people into an illegal war uh, on many footings. And it isn't the only war they've led us into. So, the bottom line here, <coughs> excuse me, is that we are making the judge aware singularly that he is aiding and abetting, he is supporting a conspiracy and an illegal activity from the rendition of, pr rendition of prisoners that was proven to have been made through Manchester Airport and through uh, um, Belize. Um, one of the reasons that uh, Michael Todd, the ex-Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police, was killed on the top of Mount Snowden. Um, other people have um, been involved in this and have come forward as whistleblowers to prove that the United, the United States and the United King Kingdom in their cosy government relationship we're all involved in these activities. So, he is aiding and abetting, he's assisting in the criminality, and as a result, he is party. He's a joint principal in a joint conspiracy with the rest of the conspirators. There are also um, documents and arrest warrants being um, circulated at the moment in the United States, which we are going to be involved in, 
and this is under the RICO legislation. So if you don't know what RICO is, RICO 1970, look it up, um, the Racketeering Influenced Corrupt Organisations Act, which gives <coughs> the power of the common law court to use the statute law there to go into these assemblies, wherever these people are, and serve arrest warrants on them. So from that point on, the judge will have two options, we suggest. The first option you'll give the judge is the following. Judge, you can proceed with the proceedings against me today and accept the consequences of future actions by the International Common Law Court of Record 750181 against you, bringing you to trial in a common law court for uh, aiding and abetting in these crimes. As far as the RICO legislation is concerned, he might as well be there in Guantanamo waterboarding these people or in Afghanistan pulling the, 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 the trigger which propels the bullet down the barrel because it makes no differentiation. He's an agent and he's acting as a principal and agent at the one and the same time. So that's the, that's the, the bad news for him. The good news for him, he can, through his absolute discretion at that judicial moment in time, do the following. He can dismiss the case. He can adjourn the case. He can postpone the case. He can do a, a myriad of things just so that the case doesn't go forward on that day and you have time to reassess and take it further. Now, that's probably his best option because why would he take on a responsibility and the uh, implication of being tied up in something that he, he probably can avoid? He's either going to be very stupid, very arrogant, or very unintelligent if he proceeds with the first route of action against you on the day. If, I, if it was me, I'd say it's a no-brainer. I'd just let it go, postpone it, let another judge pick it up in a month or two on the adjournment. So this is where we're going with it. The judges are going to have to be made responsible. They are the pivots in the system. They are the hubs of the wheel because there's only a finite number of them and with each person coming into the court or arranging to get into the court in front of them, they can be disabled and the whole judicial system can be brought gently to its knees and the common law courts of record can be re-established. Hope you enjoyed it. More to come. Um, don't forget to press the subscribe button and pass this on to your friends. Sorry about the little tickle. Uh, didn't drink enough water. Thank you.